Hi, this is a supplementary math lesson for advanced math, lesson 70, percentile and z-scores. And this is meant to be a tie-in to the video uh, that you were to watch uh, prior to this. So if you have not watched PBS video crash course statistics number 18, z-scores and percentile, <laughs> go ahead and exit out of here. Go to that email I sent. Uh, has a link to that video. Watch the video answer those homework questions and then come back uh, to this lesson to do it okay uh, this lesson in the textbook uh, has a couple interesting uh, points in addition to that video one being uh, they gave us an equation that will return a percentile underneath a uh, for a, a distribution curve a, sta a normal distribution okay um, and so we look at it and man it looks like a belly whopper of an equation and we would not really want to be entering that into our calculators over and over again uh, being statisticians there's very good likelihood we would do something wrong okay uh, and so that leads into the concept of standardization uh, making a normal distribution curve a standard normal distribution curve or a lot of times they just call it a standard curve uh, standard distribution okay it has been standardized and that's that process of making <coughs> the mean zero and making all the x values along um, the x-axis uh, standard deviation values okay then we can use standard normal tables and we have one there in your book at the bottom of page 442 okay right here and that's a that's a, an abbreviated one uh, they have rather large ones that will cover much more values and what are the values on that table okay uh, it relates z score to the percentile and remember what is the percentile our book defines it it's the area under the normal distribution curve <coughs> excuse me okay for the range uh, of zero all the way to the left up to our point of interest our our data point our value of interest okay it gives us the area under the curve and so what does that tell us it gives us the percentage if the area the total area under the whole curve is a hundred percent of the area the area under the curve up to this point of interest gives us the percentile it is the percent of data under our normal distribution curve the percent out of 100 okay that lies to the left or below our value of interest okay it gives us an idea where do we fall in our population if our value of interest is here X we could just look at it graphically and say well you know roughly I would say about 85 percent of that shaded area represents the area of the uh, under the whole curve and I would so you would say this would be put us at the 85th percentile okay that's just my guess of what that value is okay and this is kind of a glimpse into pre-calculus okay uh, what do we need to do what do we need to find an area okay well we need a length or a value times a length another value uh, like a rectangle we need the the length times the width okay in mathematical uh, uh, way of doing that we need the the value of the function okay and I said any curve I've mentioned this to you before a couple times in advanced math any curve that we can plot as a function we can represent in a mathematical formula okay and here's proof of it they just they just gave it to us okay and it's some of them I said are really complicated look at this one it has pi in it interesting has e okay that natural number e resurfaces all the time in, in our God's created universe kind of interesting as well okay has exponents has division uh, has multiple variables okay uh, has raised has powers raised to powers uh, all kinds of complicated stuff going on but it can be expressed that curve can be expressed 
in a mathematical formula. Okay, and let's just look, what are they doing? A glimpse into pre-calculus here. If we find the area of a rectangle plopped down on our x, y uh, uh, coordinate plane, uh, and the value here of the rectangle up here is a two, in other words, the, the function of this rectangle can be described by the equation y equals 2. It's a horizontal line at the value 2 everywhere, okay? Uh, it doesn't have a variable in it because it's constant, okay? It, it doesn't change uh, with the value of x. It's always 2. So we don't have any powers. We don't have any uh, fractions in it. We don't even have any variables in it. We only have a number, okay? That is the expression of this function right here, a flat line, a horizontal line at value two, okay? And if it runs from our origin at a value of zero over to a value of five, okay, that is the range that it runs, five. Well, you know, we know way back from when we started doing areas, okay, length times width, the area of this rectangle is two times five. Okay, for a, a mathematician in calculus, well, they will say the value, the equation of the function is y equals 2. So it's the equation of the line times the range, how far it runs. It runs from 0 to 5. Okay, it runs 5 units. Okay, so it's the same drill here. If we know the value or can express that function of the normal curve uh, in mathematical way times the range it runs from this point of zero all the way to x, we can determine the area under that curve, okay? And uh, the book says this, even though it's listed as y, this actually stands for the percentile, the value under that curve, the area under that curve from zero over to our value of interest, okay, even though it's expressed as y. So this equation actually involves into it, it involves the equation of that curve times the range, okay, because it equals the percentile, equals the area. So it actually has both of them in there, okay. So we don't like to use that, it's a complicated one, okay, so by just using the, uh, in your book, the uh, relationship of these variables that will change, okay, we can go to a standard normal table. They have solved this equation for us for everything except the variables involved, okay? So if we can relate to that table, and the book does it in this way, the variables, then we can go ahead and use those pre-canned solution. They they have uh, solved that problem, okay, for every uh, standard deviation away from the mean, the mean being the, the orange value here, okay, they have solved the percentile for us, so we don't have to plug into that equation. So the text goes through how to do that. It does a pretty good job explaining what's going on, at, so go ahead and read that section. Uh, become familiar with these new Greek symbols, mu, which represents the mean of the population, and sigma now represents the standard deviation of the population. We've normally been using x bar for the mean, okay, uh, for the population, and we have been using sigma, okay, but now those values, mu and sigma, are going to relate to the population as a whole, and these values, x, x bar, and s sub x, okay, are going to uh, be related to any sampling we do out of that population as a whole. And we'll get a little more into that uh, going forward in some of our other statistics sections, okay? So that's the, <laughs> the drill today. I've uh, selected only uh, probability uh, statistics types problems in your homework sets, and that's all we're going to be doing uh, from here on out. We have a couple more. I think we have maybe um, two or three more statistics type uh, concepts to bring up. 
Uh, and that's all we're going to do finishing out uh, advanced math for the rest of the year. We're already, our goal, what we needed to be at the end of the year was less than 60. So we were already there and there's no need to delve into some more of this complicated stuff through this remote learning. We'll just park on statistics now, kind of take a, 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 a a more prolonged look at an area of mathematics, uh, mathematics that's a little bit different, a little easier, and a little more interesting, I think, and practical in a lot of areas. So hope that helps for today's lesson. Shoot an email or a text with any questions. And I think you just have, uh, well, you'll have, I'll have another crash course video for you to watch uh, tomorrow. Uh, as well. So, so long till then. Bye.